We ready? It got really quiet all of a sudden, so I think that means we're ready to start. But good afternoon, everyone. President Gray and city council members, guests and Omaha citizens, it's an honor to be with you here today. And I wanna thank my husband, Joe, and my daughter, Elizabeth, for supporting me today and every day. Each year, we measure our progress against our goals, and we share exciting changes ahead for the city that we love and we focus on the challenges that are before us. Those we serve are very confident and they're optimistic. Omaha is an extraordinary city. The people that we live and work with every day, our neighbors, our friends and family, they make this possible. I want to thank everyone who is doing their part to make Omaha the city it has become. And I believe the, the future is even brighter. This year, I am especially pleased to report in impressive strides that we have made to make Omaha a safer city. Our commitment and the investments we have made to improve public safety are paying off, and I appreciate the City Council's valuable ideas and input. We tracked seven categories of crime, and all seven declined last year. In 2018, there were 22 homicides, the lowest per capita in 20 years. When compared to 10 comparable cities, Omaha recorded the lowest number of homicides, fewer than Wichita, Tulsa, Kansas City, and Minneapolis. Last year, our police department solved 91% of all homicides, a 10-year high and a clearance rate much better than the national average of 53% for cities of our size. The number of shootings also continues to be low, 100 injured in 78 incidences in 2018. And these are not just numbers that look good. These are trends that show strong progress. Declining crime rate, high clearance rate, a reduction in complaints against officers, and strong police community relations. Chief Schmatter calls these our city's vital signs, and our vital signs are good. This is especially encouraging since our city has experienced strong population growth and expanded borders. We've added about 35,000 residents to the city of Omaha through annexation in the past six years, so better results for a larger city. Unlike other achievements, however, there are no celebrations or high fives for improvement in our crime numbers. Too many lives are still affected by senseless violence. Our progress has only made my resolve stronger, knowing that we can improve this most important aspect of our public service. So we will press on full speed. So why did this progress occur and how can we continue to improve? We have sharpened this focus and created strategies that bring us where we are here today. We have increased the number of police officers from 804 to 902. This summer, we will open the new fifth police precinct in Elkhorn. The traffic division, the bomb squad and the SWAT team will also be based here. Precinct boundaries will be redrawn and a new class of recruits will complete their training to coincide with the grand opening of the 5th Police Precinct. The new precinct and the increasing number of our police officers is part of our strategic plan to provide the necessary resources for excellent police services throughout the city. The level of public engagement by our police department has led us to a high level of community cooperation and support. This public trust encourages citizens and organizations to assist with our crime prevention and our enforcement efforts, and they are as responsible for our progress as anything. Public safety starts with every Omaha police officer. The officers assigned to our uniform patrol are on the front line. Their daily work supports our public safety goals, 
and we can attribute our declining crime rate to their commitment and to their professionalism. Uniformed patrol officers who work in each of our precincts are here to represent the hundreds of officers who are patrolling your neighborhood today, answering your calls to 911 and attending your neighborhood meetings. Officers Ray, Keenan, Buckley, and Schlotzauer, thank you. It's always a pleasure to recognize those who are dedicated to serving our city. So will you please all help, have me, or help me thank Chief Schmatter and his command staff and these officers who are here today. Would you all please stand? We are a safer city because of this result-oriented police uh, uh, department that we have in Omaha. There are, of course, hundreds of city employees in other departments that provide critical public safety services. Since February 4th, our street maintenance staff has worked 24-7 to keep our streets open and safe. It takes a team to keep the city open during severe winter weather. The street maintenance staff is represented here today by employees who have been plowing snow and patching potholes all winter, and their supervisor, street maintenance engineer, Austin Rouser. Could you all please stand? There they are. They didn't even have time to change. Look at them there with their vest on. Gentlemen, thank you for your constant work in winter's worst conditions, especially this year. Today seems like the perfect opportunity to share a national recognition. We have just learned from the American Public Works Association they will recognize the City of Omaha with its Excellence in Snow and Ice Control Award for 2019. The award is given to recognize best practices in snow and ice removal while minimizing environmental impacts. Congratulations to this hardworking team. And we are certainly ready for spring. It's 19 days away, so we'll, we'll keep counting. Public safety is also ensuring safe and healthy housing. The public saw firsthand the works of our housing inspectors at Yale Park Apartments last September. These inspectors completed more than 9,000 inspections in 2018, resulting in safer housing and improved living conditions for thousands of people. And of course, the first responders of the Omaha Fire Department. In 2018, the Omaha Fire Department responded to more than 54,000 emergency calls. We have installed new station alerting technology in our fire stations to greatly improve our communication between 911 and our first responders. We will build two new fire stations, the first at 34th and Q. This will replace station 31 at 25th and L, and we will soon ask the city council to approve the land purchase. The second station is planned along 72nd and Cass Corridor, replacing station 53 at 80th and Dodge. We will continue to purchase and replace fire trucks, medic units, and other equipment necessary to improve public safety. And effective today, March 1st, the Omaha Fire Department has earned a Class 1 rating by the Insurance Services Office. This is called the ISO rating. This is important because a class one rating can have significant impact on your homeowner insurance rates. Of the 46,000 fire districts rated by the insurance service office, less than 1% earn a class one rating. The rating is based on many factors, including the number of fire stations and fire apparatus in a city, training and fire prevention programs, code enforcement, and personnel. In less, just the last two years, 41 Academy graduates in the fire department have joined the department. In April, another class of recruits will graduate. Congratulations to Chief Olson, his command staff, and the Omaha firefighters that are here today representing all three shifts. Could you all stand? Thank you. The firefighters, the housing inspectors, and street maintenance staff all provide services that ensure your safety every day with every emergency. 
Another area of great importance is our Omaha economy. This includes strong wage growth, low unemployment, very encouraging business expansion, and new developments. Great American cities have great and thriving downtowns. Cities that are struggling have downtowns that are cut off from the newer parts of the city, and that leads to economic stagnation and decline. Downtown Omaha is in the midst of one of the most significant growth periods on record. So many important milestones have led us to today, beginning with the Jean Leahy Mall in the mid-1970s. When I visited Omaha for the first time 27 years ago, there was no CHI Health Center Arena. There was no TD Ameritrade Park or Kiewit University. There was no First National Tower, String of Pearls along Abbott Drive, or the Bob Carey Pedestrian Bridge. There was no Heartland of America Park, or Holland Performing Arts Center, or Gavilon, or Gallup Campus. Every one of these developments has impacted the growth of downtown Omaha in the past 27 years. Yesterday, we broke ground on a $300 million project for revitalizing a riverfront. Important for the taxpayers, about 80% of this cost is funded by private donors. That money has already been committed by our generous philanthropic community. We are thankful to the Downtown Riverfront Trust and all of its donors, led by Moens Bai and Ken Stenson. This type of partnership just doesn't happen in any other city. Ken and Moens are here today, and I want to thank you both for your leadership. I believe this will be one of the most significant projects in Omaha's history. It reflects the generosity of our donors, the beauty of our riverfront, and our faith in the future. This project will be Omaha's new signature, and I can't wait to enjoy it with my grandchildren. But that's not all that's happening, far from it. The ConAgra campus, a $500 million development, featuring retail, residential, a hotel and green space in the first phase. A plaza will connect it to the old market, and that's very important. The Highlander 75 North in North Omaha, an exciting project that has created affordable housing, commercial space, and a community center to an area of our city that needs quality investment. We are excited about the opportunity to receive a $25 million federal grant Omaha is one of four finalists being considered to receive the Choice Neighborhood Funds. If selected, this grant would fund the North 30th Street Transformation Plan. With the work already underway at the Highlander and the neighbor, neighboring Prospect Village, the stage is set for the transformation of North 30th Street. The Millwork Commons project in North Downtown will transform an old industrial area into a commercial space with a local company, Flywheel, as the first tenant. This $300 million project is a great example of how we can have both growth and preservation and how it will benefit our city. The Kiewit Global Campus is part of the Builders District in North Downtown, and it will be home for up to 650 Kiewit employees. The Capital District, this downtown project is already open for business with a new Marriott Hotel and an entertainment district. Each of these projects realizes our goals to make downtown Omaha the economic engine of the, reason, uh, of the region, to offer a great quality of life, unique civic and cultural resources, and open public spaces. And there's more. In West Omaha, Hartwood Preserve, the 500-acre housing, retail, and entertainment project near Boys Town. When fully built out, it will include over 2,000 new homes, apartments, and condo, condos with a project value of over $1 billion. Avenue 1 at 192nd and Dodge will be another billion-dollar mixed-use development that's underway. Exarban Village, now home to HDR, and the Blackstone District continues to grow and attract new residents, businesses, and customers. The historic Blackstone Hotel is being renovated and will again be the grand centerpiece of this neighborhood. LinkedIn has committed to a new location at Sterling Ridge in West Omaha. Within three years, LinkedIn may double its current payroll in Omaha. And we are actively working with interested developers on the Civic Auditorium site 
and at crossroads. So stay tuned. Another important measure of growth is the number of building permits that we issue each year. In 2018, we have issued more than 14,000 building permits for a total valuation of over $800 million. That brings the total to 93,000 building permits valued at $4.6 billion since I have become mayor. Our neighboring cities are also doing well, and that's important for us in the greater metro area. This includes amazing new technology and community-driven projects in Sarpy County and in the River's Edge campus in Council Bluffs. These projects all spur even more development, grow our economy, create jobs, and generate recreation and, and event opportunities. Just imagine the impressive riverfront project and all the development of underway and how it will change Omaha as we see it today. New energy, new life, new opportunities, new work, and new entertainment and leisure activities. It's all pretty exciting, isn't it? I love reading city ranking reports, too, to see what others think of Omaha. Omaha is number one on the list of the up-and-coming tech hotspots, according to Livability. ZipRecruiter lists Omaha as a number one city for college graduates to stay and start their career. And a U.S. News & World Report lists Omaha as one of the ten most affordable cities in the country. For Omaha to continue to excel, the services and industries that drive investments and talent must also remain very strong. One good example is Epley Airfield. A well-managed, thriving airport is critical to our economy's growth and livability. More people than ever used Omaha's Epley Airfield last year, more than five million passengers. More airlines offered services and travelers responded. 10 years ago, Epley had 17 nonstop destinations. Today, there are 34. As you know, one of the most necessary services that we provide to taxpayers will change significantly when we choose a new contract for solid waste collection. The new contract will be awarded next this year, and a new system must be in place prior to the end of 2020 when our current contract with waste management expires. This is a critically important decision that impacts all of us, and it could double our current annual cost. That's why we started planning in 2016 with an analysis of environmental and economic impacts of yard waste collection and disposal. We held a series of public meetings and, and with uh, equipment demonstrations. We uh, conducted a pilot of 2,500 households over six months to test the covered carts and the automated trucks. We solicited input through telephone surveys, through email feedback of thousands of citizens. The four bids that we received are being reviewed right now, and I will soon make a recommendation to the City Council for approval. We need a modern, safe, efficient, environmentally friendly collection system that we can afford. We will choose the best system within our current budget, and I will not support a tax increase to fund the new contract. We also need modern, safe, and efficient transportation options. I'm really excited about Orbit, the Omaha Rapid Bus Transit System. Orbit will offer convenience and technology on the initial route, Dodge Street, uh, as will be on Dodge Street from 10th Street downtown all the way out to the West Roads. The construction of the Orbit station will begin this spring, and the first bus will be on the road in 2020. At every transit stop, there will be opportunity for new and more dense development. We are in the process of asking for your input on the best type of development along the route. Three more public meetings will be held this month to solicit your feedback. Orbit is just one piece of the future transit needs of our city. Omaha is one of 11 cities selected to participate in the Smart Cities Initiative. The goal of Smart Cities is to use technology to improve city services, and our focus is on transportation. A steering committee chaired by myself and Derek Leathers, who is the CEO of Warner Enterprises, chair this committee. And we are study working right now on three initiatives. The first is a smart district in Omaha to test new technology. The second is a series of pilot projects. And the third is a unified regional transportation plan. 
Expect an announcement in the next few months. A reliable transportation system starts with maintaining our infrastructure. This year, we will continue our aggressive street resurfacing program. We have 69 projects in the 2019 schedule. In addition to that, the City Council has adopted our capital improvement program, which will provide over $320 million for transportation projects over the next six years. Road repair and resurfacing will remain a priority. Since I have been mayor, we have already resurfaced 640 lane miles of road at a cost of $58 million. An important service we provide to the taxpayers is the mayor's hotline for citizens' opinions and complaints. Last year, we resolved 39,000 requests, ranged from potholes to trash collection and just about everything else. Six weeks ago, we launched a new hotline communication tool, and we call it omahahotline.com, and users can easily report their concerns, and they can also track the status. Already, more than 1,400 reports have been received on this new website. We are now working on a new app also. It's not out yet, but we are working on it, and I think it's going to be pretty great. And that app will put more city services at the fingertips of residents and visitors. We want your interactions with the City of Omaha to be always positive. We are in the customer service business, and these hotline tools will offer good, responsive customer service. Of course, we have our challenges. We are currently working on steps to improve safety of rental housing. Last fall, we took an unprecedented action against the owner of Yale Park Apartments for unsafe and substandard housing. The conditions were horrendous, conditions no one should live in. We relocated the refugee families the same day, which was a very complica complicated task. I want to thank all of our partners who helped these families during this very uncertain time, especially the city staff at Adams Park and Columbus Park Community Centers. Arinthian Everett and Pam Perry are the center managers. They are here today with their teams so we could say thank you 